right, everybody, welcome to UA 2018 Day 6. Yeah. Everyone have a good camp night here at Northeast Soft Road Adventures. It was the best. Well, the tail end of day five led us to where we are right now, which is Northeast Off-Road Adventures. Where are we going? Now it's day six and we're going four-wheeling. Uh, this is John Mapes. John, tell us a little bit about this area. All right, we have uh, 68 acres of our own private uh, training facility. Uh, we normally do off-road driving training uh, for basic and beginners. And then we also offer advanced trail riding and vehicle recovery. But we'll be covering some of the harder uh, trails today and get you guys stuck. and use those winches a little bit. Awesome, awesome. And I understand we're, we're only about 90 miles from Manhattan, right? Exactly, we're 90 miles exactly from Manhattan. Um, you can check us out at nyoffroaddriving.com. Awesome. All right. All right, well, let's hit the trails. Sounds good. Now, before we go four-wheeling, a certain Mr. Payway needs to settle a side bet he had with Ian Johnson and is now sporting a new hairdo as a result. Now, the details of the bet are lost to history, but I think it's a good look. Hijinks over, it was time to get down to business. And we all dropped in behind John to explore his training grounds. Apparently some of us are still getting used to the dimensions of our rigs. Oops. There are advantages and disadvantages to being in the front of the pack. You get first shot at being a hero or a zero, and you get to try out what you think is the best line. Catch is, the line you think is right isn't always the best one. Now, after six days of wheeling, the buggy's rear suspension had multiple issues and at this point was pretty much held together by faith. So I adhered to the three try rule. In the name of keeping everyone moving, of course. Nothing to do with the possibility of avoiding broken parts. Enter Rick Prater to school everyone on how it's done. Textbook. Readers Johnny and Amber followed Rick's lesson plan exactly. Now, these two have had an awesome week with no real issues so far. Johnny knows his rig inside now, and it shows. Looks like the expiration date of the quick fix on Ken's radiator from day three has passed. Luckily, he has a spare. Meanwhile, Dave Chappelle reminds us that school is still in session. fan got into the radiator going out, up an obstacle and finally finished off this radiator. So I have a spare, We're about to put it in and we'll get back on the trail. After peeling off to fix a problematic steering box, Falcons Gerald Lee and John Butler rejoined the group for the last camp night and are now making short work of the terrain at Northeast Off-Road Adventures. The Cummins R2.8 makes gobs of torque down low, but that's not to say it won't rev when needed. one could ever get tired of the symphony that is the LS power plant under the hood of the off-road design K30. Unfortunately, the bad bounce on that spectacular climb claimed a front axle shaft on Chris Durham's JK Gladiator. Having the right spares, the right tools, and the right equipment is important on Ultimate Adventure. Chris used a Premier Power Welder to cut a spread axle shaft gear so he could get the old shaft out. Alabama native Sam Gillis attacks the problematic shelf Southern style. Plenty of throttle and without backing down. Not to be outdone, Keith Bailey uses the same hometown technique. Apparently works just as well in New York as it does in Alabama. Uh, not quite that easy. 
I usually make it much harder on myself. <laughs> Sam went up it. I had to go up it. Warren's Corby Phillips decided to share his climb and set up Facebook Live for his friends to watch. He and Chris Durham have put a lot of time into his Golden Eagle to add the classic CJ grill to the front of his LJ. Mm -hmm. Corby, Fred Perry, and all of Corby's friends went for one heck of a ride. Get a cell phone anywhere? It's still on Facebook Live. I'm sure it's still broadcasting. It's on a seat. I just put it in there. So there was a rock, there was a hill, a lot of gas, a lot of air pressure. Uh oh. You alright? Yeah. Nobody got hurt. Just a little pride, but uh, nothing money can't fix and little parts and paint, so no big deal. We're gonna try it again in a few minutes. Corby showed up to do some four-wheeling. Now he was brave enough to give it another try. He was also smart enough to know when to back down and save it for another day. Local Tractor Dave shows us how to properly use that tree. Note to self, let the locals go first. Moving on to other obstacles, it's obvious that Northeast Off-Road Adventures has the perfect terrain for a driving school, as they have a little bit of everything. It's hard to believe this place is less than two hours from the middle of Manhattan. Whether you're new to off-roading or a veteran, it's worth checking out. was really cool it's just a neat spot you know they bring people here to train them so it was kind of neat to see all the different types of terrain but had some fun ledges we could play on a couple of people had too much fun some people had just the right amount of fun and apparently now we're driving really far on the highway but I still don't know where we're going This place is awesome, John. I mean, we had a rollover, <laughs> but uh, overall, I mean, this is this place is great. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thanks for coming out. That was definitely the first rollover. Hopefully, the last one here. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of ground to cover, so we're gonna take All off. Right. But thank you, much. Thanks a lot. Northeast Off Road Adventures is an awesome place. Once again, we were behind schedule and had an appointment to keep. Whenever possible, we like to make the most of getting from point A to point B on Ultimate Adventure. Like yesterday, for example, where we tied in some history with the Beckley Furnace, a place where iron was smelted for nearly 100 years. So this is the site of the Beckley Furnace, which was part of the start of the Industrial Revolution. This was built in 1847, and it was one of the most important iron sites where they actually forged and smelted iron. Believe it or not, even though we're quite a ways from the coast, they built a lot of anchors here and took them out to the coast for sale. You can still see one of the stacks. Unfortunately, it was almost all gone until the 50s when they started rebuilding everything. Uh, but it did last until about 1923 when the operation was finally closed down. But you can see around the corner, there's the falls. It was a, a 
impressive, impressive place. These pit stops are a nice break from the hectic pace, but they're also a reminder that the adventure is not just about the four-wheeling. It's about exploring places you would probably never otherwise go and learning new things. It's also a chance to check things over and make repairs. Now, Tiger from Quigley did exactly that while we were stopped at the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome, a place that is full of pre-World War II aircraft and machinery. Now, the ingenuity and respect among gearheads transcends time. And of course, there's plenty of goofballs both past and present. Pennsylvania, across the Delaware River into New Jersey. We're on some very scenic little back roads in New Jersey on our way to our final destination for the day. We used the bridge at Dingman's Ferry to cross back over the Delaware River into Pennsylvania. The last privately owned toll bridge on the Delaware, the present bridge dates back to 1900, but the bridge site dates all the way back to the 18th century. The toll? One dollar, collected the old-fashioned way, by hand. From there, it was on to points west through the Delaware Water Gap for a very special treat. It was a long road day. Uh, we actually got some wheeling in too, and we are now uh, about to cross a body of water in Pennsylvania and we are taking a ferry, and I am very excited about that. Okay, we're off-roading on water. All right, we're on the Millersburg Ferry crossing the Susquehanna River. This is kind of an ultimate adventure tradition where we find a ferry boat and move a bunch of the rigs from Ultimate Adventure across some body of water. This is a, a ferry boat that holds about four vehicles, and there's actually two of them running back and forth across the Susquehanna. We tried to do this exact same ferry boat ride a few years back, I think it was 2010, and the river was so low that year that we weren't able to get out on the boats. We almost were able to drive across that year. So it's really exciting that a lot of the guys that have been on the trip before, we finally get to mark this one off our bucket list and take the Millersburg Ferry across the Susquehanna. You're on the Susquehanna River. If you ever hear the phrase older than the hills, we're talking about the river. It was here before the mountains. This boat is 50 foot long, tip to tip with the barge on the side. It's 83 feet. This boat takes about 16 inches of water. A lot of people think that's pretty good. Deutz diesel, air cooled, 53 horsepower. From there back, it's hydraulically driven to a main shaft. And from there back, it's chain driving in around the paddle. We had four boats here, and I know they hauled 324 automobiles in one day. That's a lot of cars. And I'm talking cars with blown eight cylinder engines, cars. This ship's wheels from a 1923 Mercury. There's where the valve stem went through to the balloon tire. Steering wheel from a Model A or a Model T, what's left of it. That turns the other spotlight up on the roof. Nice. Wow. Little bombardment for the uh, hapless victims on the ferry over here. <laughs> yeah, we got him good. Uh, we got ambushed. They pulled us in with something heartfelt, nice, like pictures to commemorate the whole day, and then they they bombarded us with water balloons projectile. It'll come back, I'm sure. You never know what's gonna happen next on Ultimate Adventure. This year, it's something of a tradition where we've got a ferry, and not just any ferry, 
but one of the oldest continuously operating ferries in the United States, the Millersburg Ferry. Uh, these guys are so awesome. Not only did they stay open an hour past what they were supposed to, they actually fired up a second ferry because they can only get three to four vehicles on here at a time. So how awesome is that?